we're in the centre of Bury St Edmunds and this is the Church of St Mary, the parish church. Yeah. Actually it's one of the largest parish churches in England and when it was built it was actually a small structure compared to the vastness of the abbey which went beyond it. And that of course was destroyed by Henry VIII. So we'll have a look at the churchyard. It's a lovely time to come and see it because all the blossom is out which will only last for a few days. We've got the remains here of the old abbey wall which surrounded this entire area. Beautiful, beautiful blossoms and a simply idyllic churchyard and this is all in the centre of Bury St Edmunds. We step into this quiet churchyard off the busy road in Bury St Edmunds. Ah, that's better. Berry in bloom. And this is a very old churchyard. Well worn stones. of William Steggles who died July the 12th, 1859, aged 82 years. Well, he's buried in a really nice place and behind him he's got the extensive churchyard full of old ancient headstones. And beside him is the Church of St Mary, one of the largest parish churches in England. Beautiful blossoms and this delightful row of houses in Bury St Edmunds. Wonderful, wonderful. Alice, wife of John de Carl died April 10th, 1818, in her 66th year. That's a wonderful, wonderful grave. All ancient headstones here. Nothing recent that we can see. The trees are all mature. And the leaves are just coming out of the spring. And we can see the cathedral tower, the new cathedral tower. And over there, some remains of what was the abbey. We'll have a look inside the church. There's some very famous people buried in this churchyard and probably the most famous who, person that's buried actually in the church is the sister of Henry VIII, Mary Tudor, Mary Rose Tudor. The uh, famous boat that sank the Mary Rose was named after her. Um, she was buried here because Henry VIII married her off to the King of France who unfortunately died not long afterward. 
and she then returned to the England and married the Duke of Suffolk, Charles Brandon. So she lived her life, the rest of her life, in East Anglia. Brandon is uh, also a small town or village that's not far from Barry St Edmunds. So we've got the entrance to the church here, which is right on the corner of a fairly busy thoroughfare. Beautiful big gates. Massive window, massive window. Vestibule here. Lots of dark wood. And this is the entrance because it says so. And it says pool. Hello. I mean, and there's this lovely font here raised up on a little platform. This is lovely, and look, we've got little figures down on the bottom of it. We can stand, and the font's raised quite high, but here we see the vista of this church. It's quite unbelievable in its size. Massive arches, cathedral-like. Here we've got, this is one of the many beautiful stained glass windows. There's so much to see here. This one is just fabulous, but it's one of many. beautiful flower arrangement and when we look up from that and a coat of arms and above that is the most unbelievable stained glass window I've never seen one here as big or as impressive And then, yet to the side, we have two more. They're so detailed. This looks like the Last Supper. We've got photographs showing visits made to this church by members of the royal family in days gone by. This Princess Margaret in 1979. And that's the Queen Mother, but I don't know what year. In her Rolls Royce, just outside the front door there. And that's Edward the Seventh of Queen Alexander in 1904. From this area here, there's just the largest amount of memorials that I've ever seen. Imagine hanging those. They didn't use picture hooks. They're fabulous. Beautiful. Two little doors, and here two 
millions of people who fell in action or died of wounds or sickness in South Africa 1899-1902 from the 1st B Suffolk Regiment. More memorials down here. The office in there. This is in memory of 55 men drowned at the wreck of HMS Birkenhead on the 26th of February 1852. Lots of flags and banners around. And this aisle here to the side has memorials and stones all down it. And row after row of pews. all with cushions, all different. And ahead of us we've got this beautiful organ, but we're still surrounded by stained glass windows. These look like regimental badges. The church is just full of wondrous things to see. Regimental banners and memorials and stained glass windows, each one seemingly more beautiful than the one before. It's really too much to take in. First World War Memorial in beautiful marble. Just standing here, we can get a view of, of the vastness and size of this church. We're only probably two-thirds of the way down it. Good view here of the stained glass window above the entrance. It's the size of some of the small Suffolk churches. And the ceiling is quite unbelievable. This area is much darker. Almost all the windows in here are stained glass and that's restricting the light. We're walking up to the altar area where there are tombs. smaller chapels.
very intimate area here. With rows and rows of chairs. Which looks like military coats of arms on them. Suffolk Regiment. All these chairs have got brass plates, memorials to soldiers. Massive organ pipes and banners, flags. This whole area is lit by light coming through these most beautiful stained glass windows, all seemingly having military badges on them there. And this one is just so intricate. This whole area seems to be dedicated to the military. The area of the altar is vast, vast and beautiful, with a stained glass window that is just something like I've never seen here in Suffolk. This is simply too gorgeous to be a church. This window is dark, almost foreboding, and this one is lighter and intricate. And a very delicate, very Victorian looking plain one to the side, giving the light in really slight tint to it. Beautiful cross, which will be silver I would think. Mary Tudor, Queen of France. So she died in 1553. She's buried here. That tells you everything you need to know, really. I don't think many people realize that she's buried here. Here we have some pictures for paintings. And she was the Duchess of Suffolk when she married the Duke of Suffolk, Charles Brandon, and she was the Queen of France. She had a good CV. floor here is stunning, black and white tiles, more stained glass windows running down the side of the church, and we've got this beautiful, unbelievable ceiling. Views here are very dark and heavily carved. Many of the uh, troops from 
Australia and Canada and the United States that fought in the Second World War would be familiar with this church if they were posted and billeted in East Anglia. I'm certain of it. It has a long history with the military. Let me look down the other aisle. A grand piano here. A row of stained glass windows. One, two, three, four, five big ones there. More down the end. Another chapel area in here. A more private and intimate area. Delightful stained glass window above. We can only really have a brief snapshot of this church. It's just too much to take in. We'd need a day here or more to look at all the memorials and artifacts that are kept here. I would suggest that anyone who wanted to have a, a lovely time studying this church certainly the thing to do. This area is all carpeted, very quiet to walk on, but heaters, as you would expect in here. Memorials everywhere. This area can be curtained off, and with the heaters it's going to be kept warm. This area, area outside is so large, it must get quite cold here. The tomb of John Barrett. John Barrett died in 1467. We've got a little alcove here. I don't know the significance of it, but I'm sure that most of the things in this church have got a story to, behind them. Up above we've got, oh, a whole row of windows. Just throwing all that light down here. Well then, day when a service is being held and it's full of a congregation. This must be an astounding church. But we've also got a modern television monitor. Times are changing. So this is the children's area. This is a good a little train set, little table chairs. It's lovely. There seems to be a very strong uh, connection with this church and the military. Is that, yes. is that right? Yes, indeed. The, the Suffolk Regiment was here. Um, well, it's still here. The yeah, there's, is, is the it that chapel, that, chapel that little is, chapel is dedicated yes, to it, yes, is it? Indeed. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And as you know, this is the civic church. Yeah, as for well, very well as a parish church. It is the civic church. So all the major events Remembrance Day, ah, right. Battle of Britain, right. all those occasions are held here. Ah, I understand. Right, okay. So that chapel and, and the chairs, all the little plaques, they're memorials to yes, indeed. the yes. soldiers. They're all memorials there. to people who served in the, oh. in the Suffolk Regiment. Right, right. Is Mary Tudor buried now? I mean, she's actually... I mean, she's actually still up still there in, in by, the the, by the altar there. She was there, um, right. okay. When she was removed from the Abbey at the time of the Reformation, right. 
um, because she was Henry's sister, yeah. um, something had to be done about it. And so she was brought here, and her tomb was here, mm. um, a presumably an ornate affair. Yeah. Um, but then in 1738, I think, don't quote me on that. <laughs> it's all right. Um, they, 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 it, it was dismantled. We don't know why. Oh. But Mary herself. Is, oh, so the remains buried. are still there, but the tomb. Oh yes, Mary yeah, yeah. is there. It's still there. And the the top layer of the right. tomb is is the stone that is across it. Right. Okay. Um, but it's it's so plain and so. Yeah. And yeah we just can't believe it. I mean, um, the first time that I I discovered that she was here, it was unbelievable. Yeah. But the abbey, I mean, this, you know, this was obviously a small church at the time. The abbey was bigger. Well, this was part of it. Yes, yeah, part of the, yes. of the abbey. I yeah. mean, the, yeah. the abbey ground. Yeah. Um, hang on. How extensive it is. That's the abbey itself, the abbey church itself. Right. Here we are. We're here. Okay. We're here. Yeah, that's it. And St. James is here. Right. But when they decided in hmm, 20s, 30s, that we should be a cathedral city. Mm -hmm. Shall it be that one, or shall it be that one? Right. But you see, we have no no area, no room to expand in any way, whereas St. James had got a lot of land round mm. it. And so St. James became the cathedral, and we're still here. Mm. But you see, it's all part of the... Of, of the, the that, yeah, the, itself, the greater area, yeah. Which was an enormous area. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the churchyard was always a churchyard, was oh, it? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. And I won't ask you anything about the stained glass windows. No, please don't. You saw, you saw Victoria's window, though. Uh, no. Oh, we it. might have seen Ooh, which I'm one. I'm aware that it was Victoria's. <laughs> which, which one was this? Shock. Horror. Okay. Where, where is Victoria's in window? South Chapel. Oh, this, we, we went in uh, there. The yeah, chapel. we went into there, yeah. yeah. And the end window on the right right was yeah. given in 1881 by Queen Victoria oh, right. in memory of Mary Tudor oh that's interesting and there's all sorts of um, characters yeah actually in the stained glass you 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 can't possibly no I you, you I've actually taken a, I would have taken a picture of it cause yes, I looked at I looked yes. in the uh, Legion flags Thank you very much. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thank very you. Cheers. So we go out at the exit from this massive church and these beautiful doors into the traffic of Barry Snedman's. We've got metal arches here which they put in about 15 years ago and at the time they're very gothic and I think they're beautiful but there was some controversy over them We've looked down the side of the church here and also appreciate how large this church really is and when this was part of the greater monastery. How impressive this whole area must have been. And all the monks and people, if only they knew that this church would end up one day with all these cars parked next to them and be situated in the middle of a busy Suffolk town. Actually, a beautiful, busy, Suffolk Town. <laughs>